Okay, we're going to be reacting to a segment on CNBC about AI in healthcare and how it is helping doctors, or at least that's what they claim. Now, I'm a big proponent of AI. I actually have an AI chat bot in my tutoring company that works as an AI tutor so students can ask questions and get immediate responses as they're studying. However, a lot of the AI claims are a little bit overblown and people are getting ahead of themselves. So we're going to watch this video and see how it relates to healthcare. Artificial intelligence is now disrupting one of the biggest headaches in healthcare, paperwork. Medical notes take doctors and nurses hours every day and cut into time with patients, as we've all experienced. The National Bureau of Economic Research estimates that using AI for administrative tasks could save the health system two to three hundred billion dollars a year in this country. Our Bertha Coombs has this story for today's Tech Check, Bertha. Hey, Kelly. Yeah. So my first question is save the health system. Yes. But who is actually getting those savings? Is it patients? Is it doctors or is it massive insurance companies? That's going to be an important point to keep an eye on as we see new technology like AI being used within healthcare. You know, when you go to the doctors, you know that usually they spend a lot of time looking at their computer screens, typing into your electronic health record. But what we don't notice is that most of them end up finishing those notes and maybe send us notes back later at home. It's, it's so common. It is called pajama time by doctors. Microsoft's nuance unit has an... All right. <laughs> this sounds like... I mean, maybe someone's called it pajama time, but uh, I don't think this is a common used term in the healthcare world by physicians who are finishing up notes. This sounds like it was just said for the segment. Has an AI app that they hope could put pajama time to bed. You don't look like you feel good today. Dr. Tashella Johnson-Foy starts patient visits by pulling out her phone. It listens in on our visit so that I can pay more attention to you. Are you comfortable with me using it? Using Nuance's DAX app has... So that is important to just ask the patient if you're going to be using a technology like this. Getting consent is definitely important. Freed Foy from typing when she's seeing patients. The AI program writes her patient summaries for her, which has freed her from... Pajama time, which is should be the time where you're getting ready to wind down and go to bed. We're usually still charting and noting and doing things that are going to enhance the life of the patient, but not necessarily our own quality of life. At Baptist Yeah, this, this is an unfortunate reality of medicine, and I'm hoping AI solves this, and I definitely think it can, but charting after hours and doing work that you're not compensated for, especially if you're in an employed position, is not an ideal situation and this is what contributes to burnout amongst doctors. Now, it is provider and physician dependent. I was working with a sports medicine physician a couple months ago, and this guy had his templates on lock. He was able to dictate after each patient and was pretty much able to get every note done by the end of the day at 4 p.m. So that was impressive to see. Everyone has their own systems. Some people do go and chart the next day, but it's not good to get behind on notes, at least from what I've seen. South in Jacksonville, harnessing generative AI programs to help doctors Doctors and nurses fight burnout is a top priority. There's new economies of scale and economies that healthcare will be able to get into leveraging AI because you simply, like because you eliminate all the administrative redundancy and bureaucracy overhead and you allow folks to work top of license. Using AI to reduce administrative tasks could help hospitals cut total costs by 5 to 11 percent in the next five years, according to a National Bureau of Economic Research study. For physician groups, up to 8 percent and for health insurers, 7 to 10 percent, though the upfront investment isn't cheap. If it cost me X, but I just made my patients a whole lot happier and my physicians a whole lot more productive, well, there's an answer right there by itself. But about that productivity, Dr. Foy says it shouldn't mean more work. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like these programs are going to be very expensive. Uh, but I agree, if there is an ROI from both the patient's perspective and the physician's perspective, it's important. But again, the question is, where are the savings going to be going? Are they going to be going to these major health systems? Are they going to be pricing out? Are these companies going to be pricing out smaller independent practices from using these tools? Like, for example, Epic, I don't believe you can really use it as a smaller private practice. They're really going after these big health systems and charge 
insane amounts of money. And I'd be surprised if Epic itself doesn't have their own AI feature built in that they sell for millions of dollars to these hospital systems, uh, outpatient practices associated with the health systems. However, ultimately the idea is great. If AI can hear everything that's going on, it knows how to write a really good SOAP note. So SOAP note stands for subjective, objective assessment and plan. Then why do you have to go after the visit and write that? Now, some may say that it's important and it helps your thought process writing the notes. And I think there's a good case for that. But if 90% of your notes can be basically done as you're leaving the, the visit, that's also really nice. I'm not going to lie. Pajama time is now reserved for time with her family. This is about the doctor having a quality of life that they deserve because we're people too. So the newest version of the app, Dax Express, using OpenAI, writes up the notes instantaneously. Microsoft is working with Epic, which is the nation's largest electronic health record firm, on being able to take those notes and really leverage them. There you in go. The EHR. <laughs> Kelly, one of the things that they're working to do is to be able to write notes back to patients to do that. But, you know, they're not the only one who are trying to tackle this oh, sure. issue. No, hopefully everybody is, because from the patient experience, this can't move fast enough. I mean, it's amazing we're in a system that the patients don't like, that the doctors don't like, and yet here we are. How quick do you think the prospects are for a dramatically different experience? Well, it's one of those things that I talked to one doctor at Stanford, and she said, this is like we've gotten the iPhone one. And she thinks this is going to move a lot faster than it has been to get from the iPhone one to the iPhone 15. But again, it's not just Microsoft. If you take a look at some of the others who are trying to get in on this market, Amazon Web Services actually has a, a health scribe. Also, Google Health has uh, MedPalm. And don't forget that Oracle bought the health records firm Cerner, and they have some projects with this as which well. Which also underscores what we've heard from analysts, which is a lot of this AI kind of revolution could benefit the big incumbents as opposed to these new startups. There are a lot of startups that are working with different companies and working at different points. Yeah, exactly. So the key here is who's ultimately going to benefit. Now, I think AI in general will help the masses. And it's good to see that there's lots of competition because competition just means different products will be competing and the best will rise to the top. And I do definitely see a place for this, both in these big health systems, in smaller private practices. And I'll definitely be keeping an eye on this technology because by the time I'm starting a private practice, I hope it's at the iPhone 15 level. But certainly you've got these big incumbents who have seen the writing on the wall and they've acquired a lot of totally. these companies. And they have the install base already. They exactly. can just fire it up. Bertha, thank you. Our Bertha Coombs. All right, very cool. This is definitely a topic I enjoy learning more about. I think we are really just in the very early stages of AI, but It'll be interesting to see where this goes in the next five years. Let me know, what are your thoughts about AI in medicine? Do you think this is going to take off? Do you think all the profits are just going to go back to the insurance companies or the bigger health systems? Or can this be a win for smaller doctors and patients alike? If you're enjoying these videos, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.